on Imperfect Paradise, when predators and people collide. The Brad Pitt of the cougar world. The coyote was a despicable American character. We have a no bear snitching policy. Binge Imperfect Paradise, Lions, Coyotes, and Bears, wherever you get podcasts. LAist and Show and Tell present an evening with David Sedaris. The writer, humorist, and radio contributor will take the stage Saturday, November 16th at the United Theater on Broadway. Tickets and information at laist.com slash events. Welcome to Air Talks TV Talk from LAist 89.3. I'm Larry Mantle. Every Thursday, I'm joined on Air Talk by professional TV critics to review and discuss the newest cable TV, broadcast, and streaming series. With so much content available, we know it's hard to pick something to watch, and we're here to help. All right, let's meet this week's critics. So pleased to have with us Whitney Friedlander, freelance entertainment writer, and Steve Green, also freelance TV critic. Let's begin with Emily in Paris, starting its fourth season on Netflix, starring Lily Collins, Darren Starr, the creator of the series. Whitney, what do you think of season four? Hi there. So I don't want to sound disrespectful to Lily Collins or Darren Starr or anything like that, because I do think the show can hit on really important things, like there's a Me Too storyline this season. But for the most part, Emily in Paris continues to be a very, very great show to watch when you're trying to fall asleep. It is beautiful. (laughs) It is not that deep. And sometimes you just need to, you know, see Leslie Collins in a really chic red suit. And that's it. All right. (laughs) That's all. It's like, you know what? I feel like Peyton Manning would have my back on this, too. So I think it's okay. (laughs) Emily in Paris, season four on Netflix. First five episodes uh, premiere today as part one. And then the final five episodes will be releasing on September 12th. Uh, have have you, Steve, caught much of Emily in Paris over the I, I, I seasons? I have not. I have not gone to Paris with Emily. You, you, sadly, you've spared yourself of that. All right, Chip Crazy uh, on HBO and streaming on Max is a docu series focused on Tanya Haddix, who is uh, a former nurse turned exotic animal broker. Steve, tell us about Chimp Crazy. Yeah, so this is a four-episode series set in the world of private chimp ownership, for lack of a better term. Uh, People who try to raise chimps in a somewhat human environment, in in a a private captive environment. Uh, If the idea of people raising large dangerous animals and possibly getting in trouble with law enforcement sounds familiar uh this is from the director one of the co-directors of tiger king uh so this is kind of following in the same vein kind of following the same structure of using tanya haddix as this main prism through which to see this entire subgroup of people who who really see chimps as not just pets but but children and and are fighting to to keep their what they believe is their personal right to to have them as pets now tiger king of course was a sensation very entertaining series i thought does this have that same appeal i i it's very watchable uh and i i do think that you know tanya haddix is going to become the subject of memes and i'm sure there will be plenty of reddit threads discussing whether or not she's justified in what she's doing uh, but what i i hope doesn't get lost in all that is that this is another show with a perfect avatar for a certain thread of American life over the last decade or so. She is someone who rails against the the concept of expertise. Uh, She is someone who says, uh, how dare you tell me that I can't have this dangerous thing that I want? And she presents a version of reality that in many different venues is trying to will it into fact. So, you know, use whatever metaphor you want. Uh, But I, I, I do think that if... If this permeates the American consciousness the same way Tiger King does, I don't think that's a coincidence. Chimp Crazy is the docu-series we're talking about. Whitney, how did you see it? Um, I agree with Steve on a lot of that. Uh, One of the things that I do think is interesting is that this one's going to be on HBO and Max, and therefore it's going to roll out weekly as opposed to one big binge like Tiger King did. And obviously Tiger King hit at like the perfect moment just, you know, as the shutdown happened. What I also think is really interesting about Chimp Crazy is that there's going to be a lot of Reddit threads, a lot of think pieces, a lot of a whole bunch of just gossip, I think, on the ethics of this and how it was filmed and the ethics of whether we need to exploiting, whether it's exploiting Tanya, whether it's exploiting the chimps that she's talking about, whether the ways they want about getting the story are 
morally, ethically sound. This it's um, the direct part of the case involves a relationship with PETA. So, what is the relationship with PETA? Is PETA working in its best interest? This could go on forever. And then also, let's not forget that Alan Cumming also is involved in this too, because he has a relationship with one of the chimps. He was did a movie with one of the chimps who was who was featured in this. <laughs> okay, wow, uh, chimp crazy <laughs> is <laughs> the docu series, and he visits his friend in the series. I take it. Well. Uh, you'll have to watch and see. Oh, okay. All right. Chip Crazy on HBO and Max. It's rated TVMA. The first episode airs on HBO this Sunday at 7 o'clock, and then episodes release weekly. There are a total of four episodes to be streaming on Max. Bel Air, which is the reimagining of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the old Will Smith comedy series, uh, is in its third season now on Peacock, starring Jabari Banks and Ali Shalatin. Uh, the uh, series' first three episodes are premiering today for this season three. Whitney, what'd you think? I think Bel Air is a really underrated show, and I think it's a really good example of how something that is essentially a teen drama can hit on really important issues that we don't tend to talk about and we don't tend to appreciate more. Like Bel Air has always talked about like things like gentrification and racism and things like that, and that has definitely hit the season. Then we also have things like a marriage proposal and you know one sibling is angry at the other sibling um it's a, obviously a lot deeper than the fresh friends of bel-air story was um it's still very interesting it's still very great to see you know diversity on screen talking about the same things that everyone talks about um i highly recommend watching it all right. Bel Air in its third season on Peacock, streaming their first three episodes out today. And then weekly episode releases, there are a total of 10. We'll come back and hear about the Hulu streaming, The Tyrant, and Apple TV Plus's Bad Monkey, not to be confused with Chimp Crazy that we just talked about earlier. Uh, two primate uh, named series that we've got in the same week, but they are completely different. We'll continue with our critics in just one minute. This is TV Talk from LAS 89.3. We'll be right back after... LAist then Show and Tell present An Evening with David Sedaris. The humorist, comedian, author, and radio contributor will take the stage at the United Theater on Broadway to share insights, read from both published and unpublished work, and host a live Q&A with the audience, followed by a book signing. It's Saturday, November 16th at the United Theater. Tickets and information at LAist.com slash events. If you're cooking dinner, driving to work, or cleaning the carpet, listen on the radio or the LAist app. If you need the headlines, they're right there on the app and LAist.com. Want to dig deep on a story or get restaurant recommendations? Sign up for an LAist newsletter or get the info at LAist.com. And whether you're listening or reading, driving or digging, cleaning or cooking, we are here 24-7. We're LAist. Anytime. Anywhere. This. Hi, this is Larry Mantle, and you're listening to Air Talks TV Talk, a weekly review of the newest cable TV, broadcast, television, and streaming series. Let's get back to reviews. Next up on TV Talk, The Tyrant, uh, which is a South Korean uh, crime drama. The series uh, streaming on Hulu, and Park Hoon Jung is the creator of the series. Steve, what do you think of The Tyrant? Uh, just four episodes, which right off the top, I feel like, is one reason to recommend a show these days. Yeah. Um, this show does one of the things that I love uh, when a show can do properly, which is to just drop you into action already in progress and kind of trust that you'll put the pieces together. Um, in, in this case, you find out pretty quickly that there are a number of different parties who all want what's in a suitcase. Um, there's some organized crime elements. There's government forces. There's private businesses, uh, a couple of expert assassins. Uh, and, and in the first episode, like all the way down to the the sound design, uh, it does a really effective job in setting all those pieces up and and doing it with a little bit of humor, too. Um, and then as the season goes on, I, I think that the show kind of does get taken over by the action side of it. Uh, 
for does, better or worse. Yeah, it, it does become a little fascinated with, you know, elaborate kills or or um, or sort of that, that escalating violence as people try to eliminate people who have seen the suitcase or know what's in it. And I don't want to give away too much of what it is they're actually fighting over, but uh, it, it is pretty effective once you find out what is in there and the effect that it has on people, yeah. let's say. Uh, so that there there is another layer to this that, that I think people who are genre fans will appreciate. Now, there's a U.S. government agent who's also part of it, but, but are all the actors South Korean or Korean-American actors? Yeah, I, I, a Korean government uh, forces, yes. So, so this is... Um, I, I don't. I don't want to say it's an allegory for anything specific, but but there are um, there are uh, international considerations uh, that come from the the effects of what is in that suitcase. All so, right, okay. all right. The Tyrant is streaming on Hulu. Series premiered this week, four episodes, and that's the limit on the series from South Korea. Bad Monkey is streaming on Apple TV Plus. It's a comedic drama starring Vince Vaughn, Natalie Martinez, and Jody Turner Smith. Michelle Monaghan also in the cast. It's based on a Carl Hyacin novel, and the series Bad Monkey adapted by Bill Lawrence. Whitney, what do you think? Um, it is a very not good show. I do not think it's going to be talked about nearly as much as Chimp Crazy. So if we're going for the monkey theme, <laughs> so we're going to... So the primate series that gets the buzz is the other one. Okay. This week's primate series to talk about will be Chimp Crazy. Bad Monkey is totally fine. It's, um, again, as you said, it's created, It's based on the Carl Iason novel. It's created by Bill Lawrence, who did, you know, Scrubs and Ted Lasso and Shrinking. And so it has, like, a little bit more whimsy to it than maybe the Hyacinth book does. Um, the monkey itself is not as prominent as the monkeys and as the primates and chimp crazy are. Uh, Vince Vaughn is uh, very entertaining as like kind of like this rugged over it, like he police detective who can't abide by the law situation. Um, it comes up with conversations about, you know, wealth and you know, what's going to happen to communities and things like that, that I think will be interesting. It's it's a fun show to watch if you've got some time. All right. And it's set in the Florida Keys, as Carl Hyacinth's Correct. stories. Uh, his books yep. are set set there and usually give a very strong sense of place. Uh, Steve, is that the case with Bad Monkey? Yeah, the, the, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that takes place outside and, and in exterior areas. It's not just all on sets. Um, the the thing that I kept thinking about a lot watching this is I, I can't remember a show recently that felt like it would be at home in the late 2000s USA Network characters welcome phase of yeah. TV, which like for for many audience members and many people listening to this is probably a ringing endorsement. Um, is that like burn notice you're thinking? Kind of. of yeah. Yeah. The one thing that this is that this is a little different is that this is not a procedural. Uh, this is, you know, one story kind of told over the entire season. But as I was watching it, I, I, I couldn't help but imagine the version of the show that's just a uh, snarky monk in the Florida Keys with oh, Vince Vaughn yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just kind of, you know, solving a crime of the week. And um, I, as it is, I, I think it's entertaining. Uh, uh, it revolves around a severed arm and, and sort of the circumstances behind, you know, what may have led to that. Very Carl Hyacin, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And and you get character actors like John Ortiz uh, who who swing by and, and and make it a fun ensemble feel. But but really the, the main appeal here is, is Vaughn getting to do his kind of slightly removed wry uh, act, which like I feel like he really hasn't had a chance to do in a readily available piece of entertainment recently. So, so if this show does do well, I think it's because people are kind of missing that a little bit from their their entertainment diet. We're talking about the Apple TV Plus streaming series Bad Monkey, starring Vince Vaughn, Natalie Martinez, Jody Turner Smith, and M Michelle Monaghan. The first two episodes out this week. There'll be uh, episodes released weekly uh, uh, in the following weeks, and a total of ten episodes for Bad Monkey. Uh, thank you so much. Great to have you with us again, Steve Green. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Larry. And Whitley Fried, uh, Whitney Friedlander, thank you so much, Whitney. Always great to talk with you as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Talks TV Talk from LAS 89.3. If you like what you heard, please subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. 
We're introducing a new podcast from LA's studios, Passing the Mantle. Where we explore stories that connect generations. I'm Larry Mantle, host of LA's 89.3's Air Talk. And I'm Desmond Mantle, his son and co-host. Despite our different paths, we share a deep curiosity about the world. On Passing the Mantle, we dive into societal trends and the moments that have shaped who we are. Listen to Passing the Mantle wherever you listen to podcasts.